Well, they're making good progress here up at the site of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore after it was hit by the MV Dolly ship that you see there in the center of the screen. So this morning at about 8.30, they brought in the Chesapeake 1000 crane that you can see off to the right, the, the tall yellow one next to the four concrete pillars. And so right around noon, they finally got it lifted up out of the water. And now you can see they're moving it. I, I was watching this uh, live here. And so I sped it up for you so you can see what's going on. They basically just lifted it straight up out of the water. And then they moved it with the barge. And it's being craned right now. It's actually hanging from the crane, suspended by these massive chains. And they're just moving it out of the area and taking it over probably to the Sparrows Point where they're bringing all of the other debris. So here it's being turned around um, by the tugboats, and it's going to be just moved away. So there you can see the piece hanging there and floating. That is a massive piece. Now, I don't know how heavy that is, but I would imagine that it, it could be as much as a 1,000 tons. Now, on one of my previous videos here on this series on the Francis Scott Key Bridge Collapse here in Baltimore, I had mentioned that they're bringing in cranes that can lift some heavy amounts of truss once they cut it up off of the dally. And then, of course, some of you challenged me in, on that, and you said, 1,000 tons. You know, people were sending me comments like I was crazy. But, you know, let me explain. I try to use real facts that I've already researched ahead of time when I say something. So where did I get my information? I went right to the Don John website and right there on the data sheet for the Chesapeake 1000 crane. It says very clearly on here, you can see it says under lift capacity, 1000 short tons at 63 feet maximum radius fenders to hook. Now a short ton refers to what we call 2000 pounds here in the US. So that means this crane can handle 1000 tons. So I don't know why all of these people came in and just started like treating me like I didn't know anything what I was talking about. And 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 here's a duh factor here for you. The name Chesapeake 1000, maybe the fact that there's 1000 in the name should have been a tip off to you that this thing can handle a thousand tons. So right around 1.30 or so this afternoon is when they were able to get this thing floated up and moving. So remember the crane arrived at about 9 a.m. They were done getting everything secured by about 12 noon and they started to raise it up out of the water. And then by 1.30, they started moving it away from the debris site where they're taking it away. Now, if you are interested in watching them move these large pieces of debris and bridge truss out of the way, you can go directly to their stream time live it's a live stream and i'll put the link to it down below for you in the video description and by the way when you get to their live stream hey make sure you leave a few bucks give them a donation help them out with their new cameras um, they had some problems with some of their equipment last week and so a bunch of us chipped in and donated some money so they can get more cameras and so you know you can do that too by doing this so the way you can do this is when you're watching the live stream you can come over here to the chat and you see this dollar sign in the square, show your support. So you could click right on there. You can leave them a, what we call a super chat. So that's what I do here, super chat like this. And you can say whatever amount, you can type in whatever amount you want. You can be 10, you can do $20 right there like that. And that's how you do it. You buy and send. Yeah. So if we look at the wreckage, so it appears they probably moved out half of this section. I would think it was probably this piece right here. So they're rapidly clearing this part of the channel, which as you know, is going to be part of that new limited access part of the channel that they want to have done by the end of April, which will be 35 feet deep. And then by the end of May, they hope to have all of the rest of this cleared out. Now you'll notice that what they lifted up out of this area right here, out of this truss was just the truss. The road is still at the bottom. So what they haven't been clear about yet is, are they going to pull up the road yet at this point? Are they going to try to scoop all of that stuff up and get it out of there or just leave it there? And that's why we have a 35 foot depth. That's what we're unsure of at this point, or at least I haven't seen any actual comments directly from the unified command on this topic. So here, when we look at the later sonar images that were given to us just a few days ago, here's the four pillars. And I believe this is the section that they cut up right here and lifted this whole thing up and out. And the stuff is still on the bottom here, but we know that they're trying to scoop up as much as they can. And right here is where we think the construction vehicles are, right in this area. 
Now, one other thing I wanted to point out, too, is we are still getting a lot of comments from all of these conspiracy theory people. And let me just remind you, don't fall into all of these traps and don't even waste your time reading them because it's just one level of foolishness after another. A lot of these people like to spew out garbage. A lot of them are just provocateurs. They are spewing out garbage. That is not based any type of real evidence. When a lot of these people leave comments like they're doing, these conspiracy theorists, many of them are really just showing to the world their ignorance when here they think they're broadcasting some news or they're enlightening us. So a classic example was the um, Apollo missions. And, you know, there's a, a lot of conspiracy theory people that say, oh, the Apollo missions never happened because the U.S. didn't have the money. And so they staged it and they faked it and all that. One of the unbelievably stupid excuses they give is when you look at pictures of the men on the moon, they look at that black background and they go, where's the stars? Why is there no stars in the photos? It's gotta be a conspiracy. They definitely were not on the moon. And it's just really stupid. Even as a teenager, when I first heard this, I laughed because I was always into photography. I had my own darkroom. I knew how to take pictures and I knew how to take pictures of the sky at night. Do you wanna know the reason why there is no stars on the pictures on the moon? I mean, think about it. Just use your head for one second. And think. I'll give you a few seconds to think. Okay, so the reason why there's no stars in those images, when you set up a camera on the moon and you're taking a picture in that bright sunlight, chances are they're probably using, and, re, and keep in mind, they're using film because this was back in the late 1960s. You're probably using a shutter speed of maybe 125th of a second, maybe a 250th of a second, maybe even a 500th of a second, possibly at F8, F11, or F16. That would be my guess. That's what I would probably start off with. Now, keep in mind, folks, this is important. In order for stars to show up in a picture, you have to expose the star for at least 15 seconds. 15 to 20 seconds is what makes a star show up in an exposure. Now, if you're shooting in bright sunlight at 125th or a 250th of a second, you can forget about stars showing up. So when people were making those dumb statements like that, even as a teenager, I was laughing my butt off thinking these people are just unbelievably uninformed. And hey, the proof is in the pudding. Next time it gets dark outside, take your cell phone, go outside, take a picture of the sky. What are you going to see when you take your picture of the nighttime sky? You're not going to see stars. You might, yeah, you'll see the moon. You might see like Sirius, one of the brighter stars out there, but you're not going to see any stars at all because that requires a lot more exposure time. So don't pay any attention to any of the conspiracy stuff until they show you proof like, oh, here's, here's proof that somebody hacked into a system or whatever. Yeah, most of the systems on the bridge, on the, on the Dolly ship, are not even attached to internet, so they couldn't even be hacked. And by the way, not only that, you really need to question the maturity of some of these people that they would, you know, with total callousness, go out there and put comments like this that could be seen by families of the victims of the people who lost their lives. It, it's like slapping them in the face. So there's, you know, you have your maturity issues there. And keep in mind that a lot of these people, you know what else they're doing too? They create all of these accounts under like ladies' names, thinking you'll be more gentle on them by doing it under pretending to be some dumb, uninformed girl like, oh, I don't know anything about this sort of topic, but didn't I just see an explosion in the background go off at the same time that the bridge was collapsing? You know, all sorts of stupid things like that. And it's like, why are you wasting your time forming all of these accounts and doing all of this nonsense and spreading all of those garbage on the, I mean, what could you possibly gain from it? It's not making you any money. In fact, it's taking you away from earning money, or maybe you don't even have a job at all. Maybe you're just drunk and living down in your mom's basement. I have no idea. It's impossible to explain this kind of foolishness with a logical mind. Uh, now, one other thing too, is if, you, if you're new here to the channel, make sure you check out this other video here that I put up the other night showing additional sonar photographs that the Navy provided of the Francis Scott Key Bridge underwater, showing everything that's going on down there. You'll love those. And then make sure you check out this video over here that I did on the FIU bridge collapse a few months ago here in Miami. So anyway, thank you so much for joining us tonight, folks, and we'll see all of you on the next one.